the marriage of the father and his wife, the song of songs, which is Solomon's. Solomon equals the soul of man. Songs 1-2, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. When the soul of Adam receives the perfect love of Christ, the father, through his son in his heart, the companion woman, wisdom, waters, Eve, is open to perfect love, and this love is better than wine. It is a, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> it is a pheromonal intoxicant, a spiritual aroma that only the two of them share. In this opening sequence of the play between man and woman awaken, awakening to their true position as vessels of the mother and father by way of the son who made the way on the cross. The century point for the new believer is a glimpse or series of glimpses in the spirit, perhaps visions or dreams or weird experiences of the wonder of their partner's aroma. It is better than wine because firstly, water into wine was the first public miracle and it serves as a reference point, but more importantly, it is what the wine represents. As women are the water bearers and Christ turns the water into wine, what is really being said here is that the father's the father man has the power to manifest his forethought within the cells of his companion. He turns her water in to his own wine, his own pleasure. Later in this love story, we see when wisdom, the daughter, proclaims my bowels moved for him. This is in reference to the fact that his voice, his echo command, sent forth the command and spoken forethought of the father moves her bowels, her cellular structure. Her cellular structure responds to the awakened husband's voice. The failsafe, however, in this is that until such time as the father is ready to be woken, or the father in a man is ready to be woken, the soul of man will be restrained from speaking forth this command to the said partner or pair. Later in the poem, we will also see the evidence where wisdom, the daughter, says to her companions more than once, please do not stir up my love until he please. Verse 1 3 Because of the Saviour of thy good ointments, thy name is as an ointment poured forth, therefore do the virgins love thee. The good ointments is the combination of the frankincense and myrrh plus the golden reed of righteousness which was gifted to Mary at the birth of Christ. Therefore do the virgins love thee. Upon the male beginning to awaken his stirrings in the spirit, the process of superimposition begins. What is this, you may ask? The process of superimposition is self-willed ones who are lured to a said male, and it can happen for the woman too, but we'll get to that later in the poem. Um, the process of super, superimposition is the self-willed ones who are lured to this said male and attempting to seduce them. Not with ill intention consciously. They are simply attracted and know not what they do. But these women are unconsciously used as superimpositions or a set of veils or masks they keep popping up before the eye of this male and this male must break down all of these veils before him um, until before him is the woman who truly opens spiritually as a flower in bloom. This is what it means in Revelation that the only one worthy to open the scroll is the lamb. The roaring lion inside all men is restrained and tempered by the lamb who softens him with the righteousness and love. And it is the lamb who is the key of the inheritance come alive in these men. And then they are able to unlock the seven seals upon the heart of their beloved wisdom, their wife. The woman is the scroll of seven seals. And it is the love of the father and the son in man that opens the hidden woman. The hidden womb of man. The hidden womb of the son in man that opens the hidden woman. Oh, sorry, I just went backwards. I oh, know I didn't. And the hidden womb of man and unlocks the Ark of the Covenant that has been hidden in her for thousands of years. <clears throat> the women are the Arks of the Covenant and the only perfect love, perfect love of Jesus Christ, the Father and the Son, opens their gates. In Solomon 1 4 it says, Draw me, we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers, and we will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. Draw me has two equally important connotations. One, to draw, as in draw water from the well within the woman. Jesus begins this process from spirit to spirit, while the Adam man stays asleep. Why do I say this? Because Eve was plucked out of Adam while he was asleep. And again, she is plucked out and into Christ while he sleeps. Hence, the king, Jesus, has brought her into his chambers first, the woman first. 
We will be glad and rejoice in thee. At this point, it is made abundantly clear what is going on. This woman willingly leaps into the arms of Christ, but as a direct result, she begins to lift her female companions in Christ up with her. The domino effect of awakening has already begun, and the souls of men are none the wiser. They remember the love more than one because the imprint of this perfect love lingers and cannot be removed from memory. But each one has a perfect love memory for their own Adam. The upright love thee. Those who have loved righteousness recognize. The other draw is to draw to, like a planet, like a sun drawing a planet into orbit. But it's really moon. So uh, imagine then that each atom is the sun and each eve is the moon. And so while this drawing, while Christ starts to draw her water out, um, at the very same time she's slowly being pulled um well, they're both they're being pulled to each other. This this Adam and this Eve is being pulled somewhat supernaturally toward each other's physical space until the time when they can recognize each other and know this is the this is the one. Um, but we will go into more details of how people can start to identify who their Adam is. And you have to remember that superimpositions are very strong. 1.5. I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedah, as the curtains of Solomon. I am carbon. I am carbon. I am carbon is black, the human body. I am a human but comely and fair. The tents and the curtains are both references to the reality that she knows she is heavily veiled. And during this process, she is most assuredly hidden. People will only see the shadows of what they want to see. They will not identify her. They cannot. Sun 1 6. Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me, and they made me the keeper of their vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. Look upon, don't look upon me and judge my blackness, my carbonness, my humanness. She's saying, do not limit me to your scope of view. You only see my shadow. My physical vessel is not my true identity. She also begins her testimony here because she makes clear that as an elect member of the Christ body, she was absolutely treated unkindly in her physical rearing and her tribulation began as a child in her physical mother's house. The world hates the light. They made her me the keepers of their own vineyards. They kept trying to control her. They kept telling, they kept trying to usurp her and push their will upon her. My own vineyard have I not kept. This control she endured meant that she was for some time in her life unable to keep her own vineyard and prevented from discovering her true identity. In Sun 1-7, it says, Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, where thou feedest, where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon, for why should I be as one that turneth aside the flocks of thy companions? She questions her beloved Jesus, Which way do I go? Where do I find my sustenance? Where, where did the sheep rest? And she also begins her questioning. Why can't they see me? Why am I the one they all hate? And we will continue with Christ's response to her in the next video installment. This is going to be a very, very, very heavy meat. Okay, it's going to be very, very hard for a lot of people to accept and a lot of people to understand. But it is the truth. And I'm testifying to the truth because he's, he's made me walk through all of this. And there are others that have walked this walk too. And it will help you with your journey of how to get through that veil. I'll be back shortly, brothers and sisters. Yah bless.